a reenactment of the first two boring periods of this game. Yossi, back to Forsberg, to Yossi, to Forsberg, to Yossi, holds it, holds it, holds it. Yossi, to Forsberg, back to Yossi, to Forsberg, Yossi, holds it, holds it, holds it. Oh, that victorious feeling, everybody's hands go up, way up, as the Nashville Predators defeat the Minnesota Wild by a score of 3-2 to two Thursday night inside Excel Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. Down one nothing after two periods. Who cares? Just feed off the motivational words of your coach in the Preds dressing room and then go out there and score three unanswered goals to exact some sweet revenge against a team that did you dirty in their second game with their new coach inside Bridgestone earlier this year. Don't think I'm going to leave out the stellar performance of your number one netminder. Without him, well, maybe Kevin could have done it, but without, you see, Getting help and being on top of his game, there is no way the Preds win this game tonight. Preds' first game against John Hines in Minnesota since he was hired by the Wild, and their second game overall this season after he earlier helped his team, but with his words and structure, beat Nashville 6 1. And there was a certain hit in that game that we all remember very well that I will get to later in this game because it came up again. We think just a minute into this game that the Preds have come out on the right foot. Just over a minute in, Jeremy Lazon from just inside the wild blue line takes a shot from the point, and you've got Michael McCarron with his stick who tips it past Gustafson, giving the Preds a 1-0 lead, or so we thought. Quickly, the refs huddle and say that no, it was a high stick. Then they go and review it because you can do that without having to challenge it as coach of your team if it was for or against you. And somehow they decide that it was a high stick. But honestly, and I try to be fair either way, I think if it's because I got to know the rule maybe a little bit better. If it's because McCarran's stick was above the crossbar, by the blade, not the whole stick, then fine. But where the puck hit the stick was below the crossbar, in my opinion, and it should have been a good goal. But regardless, it's waved off, so we're still scoreless. We play on, and we reach the halfway point of the first period. These two teams seemingly still finding their feet under them in a period where the Preds outshot the Wild 11-6. Just under 7.5 left to go in the first period. Ryan O'Reilly is sprung on a breakaway but is not able to get a good shot off with the angle he has before he is defended by the Minnesota player. Preds would then get the first power play of the game just a little bit after Ryan O'Reilly's chance but are not able to set up in time to sustain anything fruitful for them. Just over three minutes left to go in the first period. Minnesota's best chance to beat Sarles is Kaprizov but he is denied with Sarles' glove hand. Neither team is able to convert for a goal, and before you know it, the horn sounds. First period in the books, scoreless after one. In the second period, this is where things would slow down quite a bit, and at times, if it wasn't for the fact that I love this team so much, I would almost want to fall asleep because play was so dull. But things would slowly start to pick up because I think the Preds finally got their first shot in a period that they got outshot 11 to 4. Preds got their first shot about nine minutes in. Gurionov goes behind the wild net and steals it from Gussis and gets it out front to McDonough, who's point blank robbed. Then during a power play with Carrier in the box, oh, here we go again. Kaprizov has a puck, a clean look to beat Sarles, but Sarles denies him. Carrier's penalty is ticking down. Oh, but oh my God, the penalty you hate to see happen even though you're just trying to defend and clear your zone. Ryan McDonough gets a delay of game putting the wild on a five on three. Reds fortunately would kill off Carey's portion of the five on three but soon after that they can only take so many penalties before it costs them and with McDonough in the box for the delay of game Erickson Eck is able to open the scoring for the wild and they lead one nothing. 
Now this is where it gets fun. And I will comment on the future of this potentially after this game down the road. But just about four minutes left to go in the second period. You've got Cole Smith who lays out Kaprizov. And yes, it was a bad time to take the hit. Luckily, it wasn't dirty. But here comes Zach Bogosian in with this stupid mentality that continues to fester around the league. That, oh, once you lay out a hit, dirty or clean, immediately you have to fight. Well, Bogosian starts wailing on Cole Smith before Cole Smith can even drop his gloves. And after all the dust had settled, thank you refs for doing the right thing here. You've got Cole Smith who goes two minutes for the hit, five minutes for fighting. And then the ref announces five minutes for Zach Bogosian and two minutes for instigating and a 10 minute misconduct. He's not tossed from the game, but yes, thank you. He jumped in there and started wailing on a guy who was not able to defend himself. There is some sanity to this world. No power play either side and we would play on. Under two minutes left to go in the second period, you've got Kapril Kaprizov who hooks Alexander Carrier and there's a penalty assessed for it. Oh, but we don't have short memories in this fan base or on this team. After the whistle, Carrier, as Kaprizov is going off to the penalty box, remembers November 30th and somebody's elbow to his head and gives him a word or two. Man alive, if these two teams weren't struggling trying to get to the wild card, and we're actually going to face each other potentially in a playoff series, that would be fun. One day down the road, Nashville and Minnesota will face off in a playoff series, and I am going to hate them even more. Reds get a couple of chances on that Caprio Caprizov penalty, but can't convert. 20-something seconds will carry over to the third period. Wild lead the Preds 1-0 after two. Third period begins. Preds are going to need to dig deep to come back in this game against a team that has not lost when leading after two periods this season. With the carryover of the carrying penalty, Preds aren't able to score, so we're back to even strength. But we wouldn't have to wait very much longer for the Preds to answer. Just over 90 seconds into the third period, Preds off the rush. The puck is along the board. Two Gustafsons right along the board. Multiple players there. Yakov Trenin gets the puck out to a wide open Alex Carey, who carries the puck between the faceoff dots in a slot, snaps it past Gustafson. Just like that, the Preds have tied this game at one. And I swear I can read Alex Carey's mind as he's making eye darts at wherever Caprio Caprizov is on the ice or on the wild bench, and he's saying, suck it, Capril. Almost 30 seconds after tying it, the Preds are at it again in the wild zone. Preds in the wild zone, passing it around. Roman Yossi gets the pass from Ryan O'Reilly, and he gets a shot from the point, heading towards the wild net, and it's Phil Forsberg with the slightest beautiful tip to get past Gustafson before he can react, giving the Preds a 2-1 lead, his 23rd of the season, just like that. Preds have gone from being down 1-0 to being up 2-1. Preds not content to just being up by one. They're trying to go for another one, get the insurance goal, because this wild team isn't going to go quietly into the night. Dennis Garionov gets a great chance to beat Gustafson with 12 minutes left to go in regulation, but he hits the post. Just over nine minutes left to go in regulation. Preds with a two-on-one, then a three-on-one down low. Phil Forsberg over to Ryan O'Reilly, who just has to feather, tap it in, tap it in, but he gets his stick on it too high and it goes over the wild net. But don't you worry, because a little bit later, the Preds would indeed get that insurance goal with just about eight and a half left to go in regulation. Puck comes to Roman Yossi from the sideboard and with a screen being established by both Ryan O'Reilly and Faber of the Wild, you've got Yossi who takes a shot and the puck must metallically be attracted to Faber's jersey because I have to imagine Gustafson lost sight of it. It up off off Gustafson, doesn't deflect, but it disappeared into his green, comes out, 
be discussed the suit and just like that the Preds have an insurance lead up 3-1. Preds go for more. Six and a half left. Luke Evangelista to Tommy Novak. Those two are trying to help out the big guns on this team. But Tommy Novak is denied by Gustafson. Preds not out of the woods yet with about five minutes left to go in regulation. Jeremy Lazon would go to the penalty box. Wild would go to work keeping the puck in the Preds zone for good periods of time during the power play. Preds only able to get a partial change at some points. Then after a whistle, John Hines calls a timeout. And then after the ensuing faceoff, after the timeout with about 30 seconds or so left to go in the power play, Matt Boldy using Ryan McDonough as a screen is able to make this a one goal game again, beating Charles. Preds only lead 3-2. Preds would have a three on one with about two minutes left to go looking for the insurance goal yet again. Cole Smith, who just signed his two-year extension, congrats to him and for really becoming the fan favorite that he is. But in the moment, he loses control of the puck before a defender is able to get the puck away from him. <sighs> but breathe, Johnny. They can do this. They can do this. I would pull Gustafson again with about 90 seconds left to go. And then there's a timeout with about 76 seconds left to go in regulation. Now it's Bruno's turn to call a timeout and cool the boys down, rest the defenders to milk home this one goal Preds win. Under a minute left to go as the Wild are desperate. They're trying to get into the Preds zone as quick as they can. But the Preds are able to ice the puck with 45 seconds left to go in regulation. In the next 10 to 15 seconds, Faber of the Wild loses the puck in key setup time in the Preds zone. Not once, but twice. Preds catching a break as they watch the clock tick away, getting closer and closer to that W. This all results in one final face-off in the Preds defensive zone with about five seconds left to go. Ryan O'Reilly with that key face-off win that the Preds needed. Preds get it to the quarter, milk off that last few seconds of the clock. It sounds Preds win a key game to get some fresh breath into this team that had lost three of four coming into this game. Final score in this one. Big road win. Preds three wild two. Some words were exchanged between these two teams. They do not like each other very much, making for what should be an entertaining game in just over a month when these two teams play again on Leap Day back in Bridgestone. Huge win to start the road trip. Just what you needed after struggling in three of your last four. Not to mention that I personally always love seeing the Preds go into a building that's having country night and beating them because you can hear it through the TV that the hometown team's playlist is always crap. As for the game, I would love to know verbatim what was said by Coach Bruno after 40 minutes in the Preds locker room. Just hook it to my veins. Minnesota Wild fans, if you stumbled upon this video, you're starting to get an idea now of what it's going to be like with Coach John Hines as your coach. Yes, you're going to have periods of success. But quite often, you're going to get your team having a one goal lead at home with him trying to milk it home before it blows up in your face in the third period. Well, we have a coach who is now constantly forechecking, not playing a freaking shell game. Preds now have three more games, believe it or not, before they will be off for 10 whole days. That includes the NHL All-Star break. Saturday, they will be in Edmonton. Oh, and guess what? The Oilers have now, as of Thursday night, won 15 games in a row. So the Preds will be under immense pressure to try and stop that from becoming 16. After Edmonton on Saturday, the Preds will be in Ottawa to take on the Senators. I'm assuming Saros will be back for that game. And then I'm completely okay if Bruno wants to play Saros because of the time off after that. Saros back home on Wednesday against the Kings. In these upcoming days, I'm just glad I don't have a Preds game to stress about on my birthday on Tuesday. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click a like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media where you can interact with me live during every Preds game by clicking on a channel name. Tell all your friends about Predemption. 
Two more games against the Wild this year, Preds Nation. One at home, one on the road. Let the hate for the Wild fester through your body so you enjoy the rest of the season against them.